Welcome to another episode of Software Explorations Concepts and Overviews. In today's video, we're going to be talking about QA metrics. What is it? What's this, why it's important? So if you do not know who I am, I am your host of the show and of the channel. I am Tech Coach Ralph, where we are engineered to win. So like I said, QA metrics, we're going to jump into it. But if you haven't done so already, do me a big favor, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every time we go live and drop new content. As well, if you need to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go over to www.techcoachralph.dev. We can start the conversation there. But, but let's jump into QA metrics, the world of QA data. All right. So, QA metrics, tracking useful data for ultimate success, all right? So our agenda for today, well, I'm going to say this now. We are going to break this up in two pieces because this is a lot, a lot of data. It's going to go into data engineering, data analytics, all this type of stuff. So we're going to break it into two pieces. So we're going to get it to, to a part of a stopping point today, and then we're going to finish the rest up next week. But overall, in this two-part series, at least two parts, right, it's going to be, we're going to talk about the importance of QA. We've done that already, but we're going to have a recap. Importance of metrics, the key metrics to track for QA, defining relevant metrics, data collection methods, data analysis techniques, visualization of the metrics, reporting and communication, continuous improvement, what are some challenges and solutions to collecting QA metrics, some case studies and examples, and the conclusion, all right? What is quality assurance? Quality assurance, um, also QA, is a systematic process of ensuring that a product or service meets specified requirements and quality standards through planned and systematic activities, including auditing, testing, and process monitoring. The goal of QA is to prevent defects and ensure consistent, high quality outputs, all right? So that is overall, in a nutshell, in a very, very small nutshell, what QA is. There's so many different components to it, but we're, this, is not a, this is not a training about what QA is. It's more of... QA metrics. So we're just going to give a quick recap, a quick overview of what quality assurance is. All right. Now, why is QA important? Quality assurance is essential for ensuring customer satisfaction, cost efficiency, regulatory compliance, risk management, continuous improvement, brand reputation, employee morale, and market competitiveness. By focusing on quality, organizations can achieve long-term success and sustainability. So companies that you have seen around forever, right? They have a very, very strong QA team because if, your qual if the quality of your product sucks, then it's not going to sell, right? You can have the best product idea, but the worst quality, it's not going to sell. You can also have the best quality, but the worst product idea, then it might sell a little because people appreciate the quality, but it's still gonna, not going to be very good. So you want to have good product ideas plus great quality of that product as well to succeed. And that's going to lead us into metrics because how in the world do you calculate if something is good or not? So what are QA metrics? QA, quality assurance metrics, are quantitative measures used to assess the quality of processes, products, or services in software development and other industries. These metrics help organizations monitor, control, and improve their quality assurance efforts. Why is quality assurance metrics important? QA metrics are crucial for maintaining high, high quality standards, ensuring customer satisfaction, optimizing processes, managing resources effectively, and supporting strategic decision making. They provide a comprehensive framework for evaluating and improving the quality assurance efforts within an organization. So the key reasons for QA metrics, right? So this is, this is why we do this. This is why we track QA metrics. Objective assessment, you know, not based on how we feel, but using actual data, performance measurement, early problem detection. So when you have things that are running and they're, they're going through these different systems, you can, you can get triggered to see what's happening when. Continuous improvement, resource management, you know, resource allocation, customer satisfaction, are customers happy with the product or, or are they unhappy? Decision-making, based on the data, what can we do differently? What can we continue doing? What should we stop doing? Compliance and standards, making sure we, we meet whatever regulatory uh, standards that are set. Transparency and accountability, letting us know exactly what it is, when it is, 
and enhanced collaboration allows people to easily work together. So QA metrics to track process metrics, product metrics, customer satisfaction metrics, efficiency and productivity metrics, and release metrics. And we're going to jump into each of those to see what they're talking about. So under process metrics, we have defect density, defect removal efficiency, DRE, test coverage, test execution rate, test pass rate, and test case effectiveness. So what is defect density, right? The number of defects found per unit size of software. So per thousand lines of code or function points, how many defects do we find in there? So I don't think I've ever actually tracked that. That would be a very, very cool thing to track. Uh, the purpose of that is to measure the quality of the code and help identify areas that need improvement. So, you know, um, is, are there unit tests? Uh, you know, uh, are there unit tests? What are the unit tests actually catching the, what the actual problems are? You know, because you might have all your unit tests are passing, but the QA team is still finding a bunch of issues, you know, so that, that definitely has to be taken into consideration. The defect removal efficiency, the DRE, is the ratio of defects found and fixed during a particular phase to the total defects found, right? The purpose is to assess the effectiveness of the defect removal process. So pretty much um, how quickly are we able to remove bugs? So when they're found and when they're removed in that phase. So test coverage is a definition of the total code or functionalities tested. So a good way to, to monitor test coverage is using like different test coverage tools of the, of the, of the unit test. And uh, you can even add like a coverage of APIs. Uh, it's kind of harder to add coverage of the UI, but you know, uh, whatever, whatever you can cover via test and you can track that number is going to help you. The purpose is to ensure that tests cover all parts of the application, reducing the risk of undiscovered defects. So, you know, you go out and you make a change and you don't have unit tests to cover it. Now everything goes haywire and we're like, uh-oh, what gives? The test, the test execution rate is the number of test cases executed in a given period. It measures the efficiency and productivity of the testing process. The test pass rate measures, it's the percentage of executed test take cases that pass. It indicates the stability and reliability of the software. So you run a suite of a thousand tests, how many of those are passing? Is, is it a 98% pass rate, you know? Test case effectiveness. The ratio of defects detected by test cases to the total defects detected. It, the, it evaluates how effective test cases are in identifying defects. So all the test cases that you wrote, are they actually catching defects? So if you are you are you including negative tests, testing scenarios? You know, because if all you have is a positive path, but you don't have the negative paths, then now your test cases are, are ineffective because it's not catching all the things that it should be catching. So now let's get into product metrics. So we have mean time to failure, MTTF, mean time to repair, MTTR, a defect leakage, uh-oh, leakage, and sev uh, severity of the defect, right? So what is the mean time to failure? It's the average time a system operates before it fails. It provides insights into the reliability and the, robust the robustness of the Product, right, so that sounds like it could be like some site reliability tests, some load testing, things like that, um, which is it's still part of quality assurance. It might not be the same person who's doing like the same person doing the functional test might not be doing this type of testing, but we need to tr um, track these times, you know. So that might be fall upon a site reliability engineer, for instance, right? You know, so it just it just depends. But all these things they 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 bubble up to quality, quality assurance, not the same quality per assurance person who's doing it, but they all fall under the same umbrella under my umbrella, okay? So mean time to repair is the average time taken to repair a system after a failure. How long does it take to get it back up? It measures the maintainability and the serviceability of the product. Now, defect leakage, oh my God, not leakage, right? So the definition is the number of defects that escape from one phase of testing to the next or even to production state eight. So not production, right? It helps identify weaknesses in the testing process and improve future testing efforts. So the defect leakage number is to say, all right, so where are our flaws? Where do we need to, to be more careful, have more eyes, more visibility on, so that we don't continue having this disgusting leakage? Yes, leakage, all right? So severity of defects. It's, it's the categorization, categorization 
Shout out to the wealth building journey with these more than three syllable words. The categorization of defects based on their impact. Is it critical? Is it major? Is it minor? The purpose is to prioritize defects, fixing, and resource allocation. It's because there are some bugs out there that they're just not worth fixing. They're not worth focusing a lot of effort on, but some of them are really, really major. So assigning them appropriately by the severity is going to help us make better decisions on what we're going to fix and when we're going to fix it. Customer satisfaction. Under customer satisfaction calls customer reported defects. What did the customers find? The net promoter score, NPS, and the customer satisfaction index. A lot of indexes, right? Or is it index, index Cs? Mm, okay. Customer reported defects. The number of defects reported by the customers after product release. It measures the quality of the product from the end user perspective. The net promoter score. A measure of customer loyalty and satisfaction based on the likelihood of customers recommending the software. So, so that's why sometimes like how how likely are you are you to recommend the software? That's to help understand the net promoter score, right? Provides a broad view of customer satisfaction and areas for improvement. So they'll ask you a bunch of questions. How do you feel about the software? What do you like? What, what don't you like? And would you recommend this to a friend? I know we've all taken that, those type of surveys before. That is to help them generate their net promoter score. So customer satisfaction index. It's a metric that combines various aspects of customer feedback into a single score. It provides a comprehensive measure of customer satisfaction. So and we're just going through all the different metrics that can be tracked and their purpose of tracking them, right? What they are and what the purpose is, right? So efficiency and productivity. So under that falls test case efficiency, test case productivity, the cost of quality, and the defect age. So test case efficiency. It's the ratio of numbers of test cases executed to the total number of test cases available. So how many test cases are you, are you executing based on how many are actually available, how many are actually written? The purpose is to evaluate the efficiency of the testing process. Test case productivity is the number of test cases created or executed per unit of time. It measures the productivity of the testing team. And now cost of quality, right? C-O-Q. The total cost incurred in preventing, detecting, and fixing defects. It's to help in understanding the financial impact of quality efforts and optimizing resource allocation. Right, then defect age. The time taken from when a defect is reported to when it is fixed measures the, re the responsiveness of the QA process and helps in identifying bottlenecks. And one thing I'll say this, right? Especially if you're on a, on a small team. Some defects, they might be around for a very long time because they have a very low priority. And some defects, they might be brand new. And because their severity is high, they're going to get pulled in right away and get worked on because it is, it is really business impacting and we want to make sure that this is not happening around, right? So next up, we have release metrics. We have release readiness and post-release defects. So release readiness is a measure of whether the software meets the criteria for release past all critical test cases, no high severity defects. The purpose is to ensure that the software is ready for deployment and meets all quality standards. Now, what is a post-release effect? The number of defects discovered after the software has been released. It indicates the effectiveness of the QA process and the quality of the released product. So how do we define relevant metrics? So first and foremost, we have to understand the business logic. Then we're going to map our QA metrics to the actual business objectives, right? So we understand the business objectives, map our QA metrics to the business obje objectives, prioritize metrics based on the impact that they have. So you don't just say, oh, I just want this random metric, this random metric. Based on the impact, like from the most impactful to the least impactful, we're going to go down that way, right? Ensure measurability and accountability. Set clear targets and benchmarks. What are we looking to achieve and where are we at? Regular review and adaptation. Communicate metrics effectively. So share what you, the information that you have. So what are some smart criterias for setting the right objectives for like, your, you know, your right QA metrics? So. The smart criteria provides a framework to ensure that QA metrics are well-defined and aligned with business objectives. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And if you use the SMART, the, the, the SMART criteria, you're going to be doing some very, very smart things. I'll tell you that. So let's talk about the, uh, the specifics for QA metrics, right? So 
specific would fall under the metric should be clear and specific addressing a particular aspect of quality assurance. An example of this would be instead of a vague metric like improve software quality, use a specific metric like reduce the number of critical defects by 20%. Now, measurable QA metrics, right? How, how can QA metrics be measurable? So the metric should be quantifiable, allowing for objective assessment. Nothing based on our fee fees or feelings. It has to be very, very objective, very, very clear, right? So an example, use measurable metrics like increase test coverage to 90% or achieve a test pass rate of 95%. Achievable QA metrics, right? The metric should be realistic and attainable considering the resources and constraints. So an example would be setting achievable goals based on historical data and available resources such as reduce defect leakage to production by 10% within the next quarter. Next up, relevant. How can QA metrics be relevant? So the metric should be relevant to the specific goals of the QA team and align with broader business objectives. And an example of that, if the business objective is to enhance customer satisfaction, a relevant metric would be to reduce customer reported defects by 25%. They should also be time bound. The metric should have a clear time frame for achievement, ensuring there is a deadline for evaluating success. An example would be define time bound goals like achievable uh, or achieve a defect density of less than 0.5% KLOC by the end of quarter number four. All right? So now how do we collect QA, QA metrics, right? So there's a manual process. I totally crossed that out because we're not going to be doing this manually. We have to do automate because, because data is coming from so many different sources. So there's automated process. And then we're going to be talking about sources of data. So what are some data collection tools for automating um, data collection, right? So for defect tracking, we have Jira, Bugzilla, Redmine. For test case management, we have TestRail, QTest, Zephyr. For CI, CD, we have tools such as Jenkins, Travis CI, Circle CI. For code quality tools, we have SonarCube, Code Climate, CoverTree, or Cover, CoverTree, or CoverTree? Coverity? I don't know. It's it's something like that. It's cover itty. Let's go, let's go with cover itty, right? I could be wrong. I could be wrong, right? We have monitoring tools like New Relic and Dynatrace. Right? Next, next up, tools integration for automated data collection, right? So tool chain integration, ensure that your selected tools are integrated and can communicate with each other. Use APIs, a webhooks, or plugins to connect to different systems. CIC integration, integrate QA metrics collection into your CI CD pipeline to gather data automatically during the build and deployment process. So throughout everything, like everything that's going on, you want to have little plugs of data that it's, are going to be sending the results back. So for example, I've done this, uh, we have a video on this channel about report portal where we wanted to sample out report portal. I added the ability to send the data to report portal in one of our repos to see how that would, how that would generate and things like that. So it is very, very useful to, in order to, to integrate into your CI CD pipeline, because when the, when the tests run on the CI CD pipeline, it's going to be feeding the data to, to our, um, to our report portal, right? Data integration and analysis dashboards, use dashboards like Grafana, Kibana, or Power BI to aggregate and visualize data from various sources. And reporting on that is to automate the auto, the generation of reports using tools that can pull data from your integrated systems and present it in a readable format. So you're, 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 you're connecting to the system, right? And then it's going to be showing the reports based on all the information that is gathering. And then you can like modify your reports however you need to do. All right? So that is part one of our QA metrics pr presentation. Let's go back to full screen. So there we have it. That, that's the intro, you know, part one for our QA metrics. It is going to be, it's pretty long. So we're going to do it in at least two parts. And next we'll be going into part two, uh, going to continue with the data collection. Hopefully you found that helpful and informative so far. We're going to be getting into a lot more data stuff coming next week and how data analysis plays a big, big role in QA metrics. We are like, like tracking metrics. We all work together to get the necessary data for the necessary amount of, for the necessary time so that we can make the right decisions moving forward, right? With that being said, we are going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, do me a big favor, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every time that we go live and, and, and go over to www.techcoachoff.dev where you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me as well as access to exclusive data 
such as getting access to our live agile trainings, as well as getting to play it back as well. And I even have on there my resume where I go and I update my resume to what I think would be a cool resume and that you can um, model your resume after mine or ask me questions, you know, whatever it is, right? So that's www. That's www.techcoachroff.dev. And we'll see you there, right? But until next time, this is Tech Coach Ralph, and we are out. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.